Hi, my name is Alan from Hogdive and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about what is anti-light, how does it make your Windows machine smoother and more optimized, and how does it pre-optimize it before you even install Windows. So actually, why don't I talk about it right now before we dive into the steps of how we can optimize our Windows image file. So here are a few things. Windows ISO. So basically, you get this from the official Microsoft. It is the .iso or the image file of your Windows machine that you're going to be placing onto a USB stick or a DVD drive, and then you're going to be, and then you're going to be placing that into your computer, wherein you're going to install Windows. But this thing called anti light can actually modify the .iso file or basically reconfigure it, so you can debloat the actual installer itself before it, you know, before everything that you don't need comes into your Windows installed machine. Does that make sense? How about I dive into the process so you can understand very well what I'm talking about. So as you can see, I am now on my desktop and I have two applications on my desktop right now, which is two installers. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is how can you get them? So the first thing that we want is, of course, the Windows 10 base image file or the base ISO, which is on officialmicrosoft.com. Uh, the link will be, of course, on the description. We're going to scroll down a little bit, create Windows 10 installation media. And when you download that, you're going to be receiving the media creation tool. Of course, I'm going to do Windows 10 because that's, you know, it's available for basically every laptop available in the market right now without the PPM or whatever. I still have those laptops and this OS, I'm going to deploy to those. Uh, but you can do this with Windows 7, Windows 8, and even Windows 11. So all your choice. But for me, it would be with Windows 10. So right here, we're currently waiting for the setup notice to come on in. And then we're going to go and click accept here. Because this is the tool that we're going to be using to create the .iso. From there, you just want to wait. And then when it asks you what you want to do, you want to click on create installation media because that's where we are going to get the .iso or ISO or the image file from here. Select your language edition. Of course, we have Windows 10 and the architecture. I'm going to be doing 64 bit because I'm only going to deploy this ISO to 64 bit systems. So from there, I'm going to press ISO or ISO, and then I'm going to go and select my desktop. Uh, this is where it is going to save the .iso that it's going to download from the media creation tool. And I'm just going to press accept and it's going to load up. As you can see, I fast forwarded the video here because it's going to take forever with my bad internet if I do this live. Uh, but there you go. Once you get it, the .iso, you want to go and extract it using 7-zip or WinRAR or just the base Windows. Right click extract files here. I extracted it on my desktop. And uh, that folder that you can see right now on the top right of the screen is the .iso file extracted and the one that we're going to be modifying. After that, of course, we're going to need anti-light. That's the main program that we're going to be using to optimize the .iso to remove things that we don't need. Let's go to the official website. Again, in the description, click download 64 bit, 32 bit, depending on your system. You're going to come up with the anti-light underscore setup file. I'm just going to run that as administrator. I'm going to go and click accept agreement, of course, next. And then I'm just going to press yes again. And I want it to be installed in portable mode. Now, of course, I'm going to launch anti light and this is the main screen. The first thing that we're going to do is add the image directory file, which is the Windows 10 extracted folder. Once it is done, choose which one you're going to use, probably Windows 10 Pro. And then usually you're just going to do create ISO. But what I'm going to do here is press OK because I only want Windows 10 Pro. But before that, I want to be installing our preset. Yes, presets do exist. And here, I'm going to show you one. So I'm going to open up my browser again, and I'm going to look for the preset that I like. So actually, Anti-Light Forums does a lot of them. Here's one that I found from Chris Titus Tech. And I'm just going to go to its official link to the GitHub. It's called the Gamer OS 10. This one basically already kind of has a predefined what to enable and disable parts of the .iso. So to load it up, I'm going to press Windows 10 Pro because that's still the base image that I want to modify. But I'm going to click import. I'm going to go to my desktop wherever I downloaded the config. As you can see, I'm going to select Gamer OS 10 final. And then from that, I'm just going to go and import the, pre the preset and then I'm going to press OK. 
And now that that is installed, I'm going to press load again on top. And of course, we only want to keep the Windows 10 Pro. So we're going to press yes. And then now it's going to do its own thing. Again, this is going to be sped up because it's going to take forever. This is actually the longest part, not the modifying part. So here, once it is all loaded, I can now do my things. So the first thing I'm, I'm going to get to is on the left side on the integrate, which is updates. So what are the stuff that I don't need from the updates of Windows? I want this to be as low possible ISO, and I want it to, of course, still be useful for my own personal sake. This would, of course, be really dependent on who you are, what you do in your computer, what you want your computer to be able to do. Um, that is basically this part. This is the configuration part. Everything that you said here, uh, deleting stuff, removing stuff, whatever, it's all in here. So I'm probably going to speed up this part of this video as well. Um, but I'm going to be removing the Hello Face, the Hello Face Legacy resources. I'm going to remove the WordPad because I don't need those. Steps Recorder, Print Management because I don't use a printer. And then Quick Assist, I would not need basically all those. Service servicing stack i'm gonna keep internet explorer 11 i would not need anymore so i'm basically just gonna remove this as you can see what i'm doing here on the integrate on the updates tab i'm removing right click and then remove the stuff that i don't need if i were you of course i would go hop into the internet to google to where uh, wherever you want and then ask it if is this thing if removed will it break my system like microsoft paint if i remove that out from the installer itself it's not going to be installed to my windows machine when i install this iso file and you know i don't use microsoft paint so i can remove those the handwriting the optical character recognition whatever i'm going to remove what i do not need so i'm going to speed this part of the video again i highly suggest we cannot go forever telling you what i'm going to remove and what you should and should not but i am just here to show you that how you can configure the iso file because that is going to take hours or days even if i would if i were to explain every single stuff that we're doing or removing and adding so after i go with that we're gonna move into drivers i'm just gonna check you know maybe i'm just gonna use this pc anyway so i just kept whatever drivers was installed in the system so that it can literally be just downloaded on whatever system but of course it's gonna skip it if the system does not need it so right here i'm gonna go and move into the remove components part this is usually where a lot of people get their um, performance boost or less process or less threads, power, whatever usage of their Windows machine, because this is where you're going to install and whatnot. But as you have seen earlier, I did use a preset. I loaded up the Gamer OS 10 preset. So that already kind of has a pre-configured components, which ones are not needed for gaming and literally just using your computer. So I enabled a few here, such as the sleeping tool, because I use that. And of course, the screensavers I would like to disable, but it seems like uh, at this point in time, you cannot remove that. Um, I would just like to remind you guys that I am using the free or non-commercial use of Antilite, and some features for me are not available, such as on the integrate updates tab and some of those, whatever. Sometimes it does not work for me. So of course here, application virtualization should be off because if you're just gaming, you won't need that mobile pc was off here as well and as you can see some of it are already pre-configured by the gamer os uh configuration that we loaded or preset that we loaded up earlier so again i would like for you to go through here one by one especially if you're doing this manually without any preset and again asking consulting google which one are safe so i would like for you to do that um, from here on the schedule tasks, I'm just going to show you quickly here. But honestly, I didn't really change anything here. It was already preset for me of what should be disabled. But of course, if I were to do this to myself again uh, without doing the tutorial video, I'm of course going to be going through this one by one and make it my own. So as you can see right here, I'm just showing you stuff. Um, you can also change settings. You can pre-configure the settings so you don't have to manually edit your settings as soon as you log into windows you're good to go as you can see on the services everything is mostly set on manual instead of running all of them you know when you when you install windows like literally new windows 
You install it and there's going to be services running already automatically, not on manual, but automatically, which will take up resources. And you don't even know if you're going to use that yet. So, you know, I just scroll down here, of course, extra services. These are the ones where you can actually disable a lot of stuff because a lot of stuff here are not really needed, but I would just suggest doing it on manual as what you have seen earlier. So the automate on unattended, that is what you would have when it is installed on Windows, such as your username and whatnot, if you want to. Right here on the post setup, I want to disable the hibernate because I don't need that. And of course, um, we're going to go and apply it to the ISO, to the folder. Now, this is the time where we're going to be creating the ISO. Saving mode, save the image. Image format, I want it to be WIM or standard editable. And of course, I want it to create the ISO like the program. Here, when I click the create ISO, it's going to ask me where do I want to save my ISO file. And I'm just going to save it over at my desktop and call it custom Windows 10 ISO. There you go. And then I'm going to label it. This is what it is going to show as when you put it in a thumb drive or whatever drive you're going to install from. Um, I just named it that custom Windows 10 Allen Avila. And then we're going to do process. And the process is going to take quite some time depending how much you um, fiddled around with your configuration of Windows. But that is practically it. As you can see, it is doing all the process and it's doing whatever you told it to do. Like it's going to remove the stuff you disabled and don't need or removed. And it's also going to install whatever you got from your own system, like the drivers and whatnot, pre-installed on the installer. So I think that is just amazing because there's a lot of creation already uh, through this. You can, uh, there are also ways to pre-install programs. So once you install Windows, you can literally have it uh, installed on the Windows machine without you having to go to the website and whatnot. And that's about it. Um, that is from start to finish of modifying, reconfiguring to be more optimized your Windows image file. And hopefully you did learn something new. You can test out my own Windows image file that I'm going to be placing on the description down below. Or you can check out my own YouTube channel wherein I'm going to do my own testing of the ISO file that I made in this video. Again, my name is Alan from Hawkdive and um, have fun with your newly reconfigured ISO file that you're probably going to be deploying to a lot of computers that is now going to be much more optimized than any official, just the official Microsoft installer. So um, yeah, have a nice day and enjoy your new image file. Goodbye.